In this world, some countries form through war, some through alliance, some through marriage, some through insurrection. And then you have some countries like this one, which was kind of like... No, Estonia, come stay with us here, don't leave! No, mom! First the Danish, then the Polish, Lithuanians, the Swedish, the Russians. Estonia is too much of a mess. I'm running away and finding a new home. Once you leave, you can never come back. Hey, can, can we, we come? come? Sure. And that's basically Patch Amberdash. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. We've covered hybrid countries before. You know, Belgium being French and Dutch, Cyprus being Greek, Turkish, and so on. Or then you get to this place, a triple hybrid formed by one of the most marginalized groups in Europe. The Baltics? Toss in some African and Polynesian influence and bam, you got Patch Amberdash, the world's most unexpected smallest conjoined empire. Let's begin. <laughs> Patch Amberdash has a story unlike any other because it started out as like a group of Baltic runaways that turned castaways turned sovereign breakaways. And here are the ways you can find their territories. First of all, the country is made up of parts that are scattered on three multiple continents, three oceanic territories and two mainland exclaves. Patch Island in the mid-Atlantic where the largest city Arsenal Square can be found as well as the largest airport Arsenal Square International. However, the second island Amber Island off the coast of Tanzania is where the capital and second largest city Jacobian can be found as well the first exclave called Madamangolia, surrounded by Tanzania's Lindi province. The last island, an atoll known as Dash Island, with the town of Mokuba, just below the Cook Islands, made up of one major island with other smaller sandbank lagoon islands around it. A little further up north, they have a dispute with French Polynesia over the Rurutu and Tutai Islands. Otherwise, the last and final territory unit lies just off the coast of the Black Sea, a peninsular patch called Zakuska, surrounded by this national park in Bulgaria's Burgas Peninsula. It has a port that is leased out to Patch Amberdash in the town of Balchik until the year 2089 as they signed a 99 year lease in 1990. With five main units all located in four different regions across the planet, this makes them the smallest nation with the largest range of time zones. On any given day, the sun will be shining somewhere on the confederation. Now here's where things get a little interesting. How on earth did these random areas across four separate regions become one country? Basically, if you want the shortest explanation, in the mid 18th century, the Baltic nations were experiencing a nationalistic enlightenment period during the Russian Empire. Empire years. Finally, in 1870, three people from each Baltic state started a small revolution gathering anyone that would follow them to migrate out of the Baltics to anywhere that would accept them. After months of traveling south with no luck of finding anywhere that would take them in, they finally came across the town of Balchik in Bulgaria. The Bulgarians agreed that they could have a small plot of land to temporarily live and work in with the intent that they would build ships and sail for new lands off the Black Sea. Eventually, some of the people never left and just kind of made that plot their home. Nonetheless, many, including the original three founders, kept their word built ships and sailed out of Balchik, through the Bosphorus Strait, through the newly opened Suez Canal, across the Eastern Horn of Africa, where their ship got lodged into a rock, and the adventurers were forced to settle on an uninhabited, newly discovered island. From there, they decided to call it New Baltia, after their homeland. Later, it would be changed to Amber. Soon, their population grew. They expanded to the mainland on the African continent, where they bought a small new exclave from the diminishing German Empire. They named it after their first daughter, Ingolia. From there, the country made more money through trade, mostly with the Swahilis and Arabs, and Europe European powers. Some people from the Lithuanian influence community wanted to expand and sailed west to the Atlantic, discovered a new island named Patch, whereas some from the Estonian influence community did likewise and went way far out to Polynesia and discovered a new island and named it Dach. From there, each new colony became very autonomous to the point where they became constituent nations, all joined in a confederated state. As in, they have their own constitutions, governments, and even currencies, however they still stick together with historical ties and the new constructed language that they spoke. And that's kind of how it happened. Otherwise, some notable spots to check out in case if you visit might include places like Jordis Square, Caldera Bridge of Patch Island, the Polo Stadium, Amber's Monkfish Grotto and Arta Monument, the Madamangolia Library and Museum, the Dach Woodworks Market, Mokuba Culture Center, and the Artur Memorial. And that's just about it. Now, what are the islands like in terms of nature? Well, we'll find out in... Now, Patch Amberdach is made up of many different islands and enclaves, but they're actually very distinct and different from each other physically. For one, Patch Island is a volcanic formed island on the southern part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge Fault Line, which gives them a cooler, wetter biosphere. The island has one main volcano, Patch Peak, with underwater vents that heat up the coast, causing the beaches to bubble and stay warm. It's relatively green with shrubbery, grasses, and they are known for producing root vegetables like purple potatoes, red turnips, and black radish. In fact, they are one of the largest exporters of black radish to France. Otherwise, thousands of miles away on 
on Amber Island and the Madame Mongolia Exclave, Amber is a breakaway flatter island that used to be connected to the mainland through an isthmus. The climate is drier and warmer with savanna-like scenery. Here you can find the largest lake, Lake Mko, as well as the longest river, the Mbeumburu. This is kind of like the fruit harvesting capital with numerous indigenous types like the snake fruit, the banana passion fruit, the weird monstera fruit, and the black sapote fruit which grows here and it tastes like chocolate pudding. Seriously, look it up, it's a real fruit. Up north in Zakuska, of course, their land is the exact same as Bulgaria's. This is kind of like the grain and forest state of the country. It harvests mostly rye and oats with a small lumber industry that ships to neighboring countries. And finally, all the way across the world, thousands of miles away, we have Dash Island, a lagoon atoll caused by a collapsed dormant volcano with thin sandbank islands flanking the exterior with a lush interior main island. Here, of course, they produce coconuts, copra, and act mainly as the gateway to the Pacific as a huge stopover hub for trans-Pacific travel. Many unique endemic animals can also be found on the island too, such as the horned albatross, the three-legged salamander, the national animal, the purple pangolin, and finally the iguana on Datch, which spits out a tar-like substance in self-defense, and locals have discovered that it's actually flammable. Otherwise, food! On Patch, you find a unique Lithuanian Islander influence style with dishes like purple zeppelins, beetroot soup, and sea bass. In Amber, you have a Latvian African fusion with things like smoked fish and beets, with monstera pancakes and mushrooms, as well as dill drink. With Dash Island, of course, you find the majority Estonians and they fused a Polynesian style to their traditional cuisine. You find things like coconut semla, smoked yellowfin tuna and jackfruit bread, and turtle egg and smoked sprat open face sandwiches. Now, if the food tells you a story on how the people of this country are, just wait till you see what the next part is. The... First of all, before we get into this, the people of this country are called Amberin. So all people prefer to be called by their region, followed by Amberin. So for example, a person from Patch would be Patch Amberin. Amberins from Amber are just called Amber. Confusing, but got it? Good? No? Whatever. Anyway, the country has about 6.5 million people altogether, and it is the world's smallest remaining empire. The majority of the country is made up of what most residents classify as Neo-Balt, which is something like a mixture between all Baltic peoples, Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian. However, generally they can be divided into three sister categories categories. The Dash Estoni Balt group at about 31%, the Patch Litho Balt group at around 29%, and the Amber Lato Balt group at around 28%. The remaining group is mostly made up of East African Bantus and Polynesians, with a few other Asians tossed in. Because their domain is so widely dispersed, the country actually adopts regional currencies per territory. Patch uses the US dollar, Amber and Madame Mongolia use the Tanzanian shilling, Zakuska uses the euro, and Dash uses the French Polynesian franc. Patch uses the types A, B American style plug outlets, Madame Mongolia and Amber use types G and M, Zakuska uses C and F, and Dash uses I. Woo! The language of the country is a somewhat Creole mixture of Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian. However, each region has their own stronger language influence based off of the majority community. Patch more Lithuanian, Amber more Latvian, and Dash more Estonian. Here's Dash resident Artur explaining. Hello, my friend. I am Artur from Dash Island. So, for example, the word for ice in Latvian is ledus. In Lithuanian, it's ledas. And in Estonia, it's ja. So we found a common ground for all those three words, and it is ledia. In Lithuanian, the word for sun is saula. In Latvian, it's also saula. But in Estonian, it's peike. So we again, we mix the words and we come up with seike. Each island speaks with their own grammar, their own dialect. I come from Dash, so we speak more Estonian influenced. It's kind of strange, right? Thank you, Arthur. In order to communicate, they developed a unique writing system. It's like a fusion of phonetic letters and pictographs. All areas of the country use the same alphabet, but the words they spell might not be intelligible to the other region. Therefore, each person is required to memorize somewhere between 800 to 2,000 pictographs inspired by ancient Baltic pagan symbols. So for example, this pictograph means electricity. The word may be pronounced differently on each island, but as long as they see this symbol, they'll know that the writer is talking about electricity. Otherwise, the people of Patch Amberdash have quite a catalog of colorful traditions. On Patch, they have an egg-throwing festival celebrating the coming of spring. On Amber, the residents celebrate the Baobab Day. As for Dash, they have a coconut husking championship you might see the locals donning the koi koi cloth, which brings us to history. In the quickest way I can explain it, Baltic Alliance formed in Konas, Lithuania amongst the three founding members, Southern European migration, Zakuska port negotiated with Bulgarians, migrated south to East African coast, Amber established,
established, alphabet created, creole language becomes official, group of litho balts sail off and discover patch, shortly estoni balts sail off and discover dash, world war one and world war two not much affected, stay neutral, 1990s economic boom through finance and travel sector, 2000s they open up trade commerce deals with air and ship transport, and here we are today. Otherwise, some of the most notable people from this country might include Suklas Totas, Volts Isik, Viltus Silvex, Viltota Sievete, Voltsige Mind, Ne Tiesa, Eolet Tusi, Kaschia, and Yuhuslik Tudruk. Alright, so that's just about it. Time to move on to the final segment of this episode, the. Now, being such a regionally dispersed nation can be quite advantageous, yet dangerous at the same time, depending on how you play your cards. First of all, the nation has always had close ties to every state that is near to them. Patch always kind of helped link Brazil with Angola, and hence, since the 20th century, had depended on both of them for much of their trade and export sector. Amber cooperates heavily with Tanzania and Mozambique, no surprise, acting as kind of like a security checkpoint for all shipments coming in from the Arabian Peninsula and South Asia, and since then, the three nations work together just fine. Zakuska obviously works well with Bulgaria, as many Bulgarians come in and out for work every day. Over 30% of the workforce is foreign Bulgarians, and without Bulgaria, they could not function. For Dash, New Zealand and the French Polynesian Islands have the most business and provide the majority of imports and exports for the island. Not only have they adopted the French Polynesian franc, but many Polynesians from French Polynesia have moved in and settled, adding their own cultural flair. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Ambrins will probably tell you their mother nations, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. The three Baltic sisters have always had close ties to their runaway cousins, the Baltic country countries offer many scholarships, business investments, and aid to Amberin locals. Tourism is huge on both sides, and the three just kinda love hearing back from their weird island cousins. In conclusion, Patch Amberdash is such a strange anomaly created by historical circumstances that never happened, because all of this is false. There's no Patch Amberdash. Congratulations, if you are new to this channel, I do this every year, and you just got fooled. Happy April Fool's Day! Stay tuned, Kitsikwaka is coming up next. Hey everybody, so, uh, the native instrument of Confederation of Patch Amberdash is the pizza. And I have to say, this is probably the best instrument of them all because you get to eat it. Um, you know, who doesn't like eating? Um, 